We are catching up with the HBO Max, or whatever you want to call it, documentary. It's called Rock Hudson, All That Heaven Allowed. Alonzo will tell us about it. Oh, you. Hiding in closets isn't going to cure you. This is from uh, director Stephen Kayak, who, uh, you know, uh, I've actually known for a long time. We're not like super close chums but i programmed an early narrative film of his uh never met picasso starring alexis arquette and margot uh, kidder uh wow. back in the day in dallas when i programmed the usa film festival there and since then he's mainly been doing documentaries uh i'm a big fan of uh, 30th century man which is his movie about uh musician scott walker um this is about rock hudson and the sort of tug of war between rock hudson's public persona as a handsome you know popular movie star Star and sex symbol of the 1950s and his own kind of private life as a closeted gay man which in that era of hollywood is what you had to do to play the game if you wanted to have a career you know you had to go on the sort of studio mandated dates with starlets and probably get married at some point and you know all of that stuff that rock hudson did and so the movie really is kind of addressing uh, both of those sides. So you, you know, and I watched this movie with a friend of mine who didn't really know who Rock Hudson was. And so oh, really? he got a lot out of this. Yeah. And he's like in his forties. So, oh. you know, go figure. Um, so, you know, you sort of see his rise to stardom and what he brought to the movies at that specific moment in film history that they needed somebody, you know, like that. And then also sort of, what his life was like and how he kind of maneuvered and managed to be a gay man working in Hollywood and, you know, keeping everything on lockdown as far as what the public knew. They talked to a lot of former lovers and, you know, uh, people who who were, were very personally close with Hudson. And, you know, there's some great a great assortment of film clips. They do a little bit of the thing that Mark Rappaport does a lot in Rock Hudson's home movies, if you ever saw that movie, from the 90s, where they sort of decontextualize these Hudson movie clips to sort of imply that he was telling you on screen yeah. he was gay all along, you know. I think it works better in Rappaport because he has a much clearer context that that's what the whole movie is, whereas here it sort of comes in and out of that. Um, it's the same technique they use in the Michael J. Fox movie, too. This is true, yes. Right, to use those sure. clips from my family ties or from his movies to like yes. comment on what's happening in his life. Absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, I, I thought it was really fascinating. I love an old Hollywood documentary with a ton of clips anyway, and I love a sort of queer history documentary. And so it is all of those things. Dave and I were talking to my siblings about this in our weekly Zoom call. And, and huh. one of the things that, that we were saying was really interesting about the film is when they talk about, you know, Hudson having AIDS and, it, and the, the, the press finding out about it and the way his sexuality was reported once they knew it there's this whole undertone of like he was fooling us all along he mm. was lying about this and blah 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 that kind of language that puts the onus on the person in the closet and not on the society that forced him to be in the closet um you know uh, as as rosa von pronheim says in his famous film from the 70s it is not the homosexual who is perverse but the society who something something it's a very long title <laughs> but you know so i i, I like that idea that the, the 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 movie kind of delves into the the notion of like rock hudson did not live in the closet because he was a liar rock hudson lived in the closet because the the america of the 20th century that he lived and worked in forced that upon him if he wanted to live and work right and we're going to talk about the wham documentary at some point mm. too and similarly like george michael Sure. Knew early on that he was gay, but if he wanted to have the kind of career that he wanted because he was so enormously talented and ambitious, yeah. he had to be a desirable sex symbol to people. Yeah. And so he he felt like he couldn't be that if he were an out gay man, you know? Right. So I you see how that wasn't that long ago. <laughs> that was yeah. the 80s. So you are so knowledgeable about queer cinema. Was there anything in here that you were surprised by or that you learned or were shocked by? Yeah, I didn't know a lot about like I knew about Henry Wilson, which is the the agent who sort of renamed him and who was himself like this very closeted gay man who like kind of specialized in these hunky leading men. Uh, you know, he was Tab Hunter's agent. He was you know a lot of a lot of you know ones who were less successful. Um, but I, I'd never seen like the screen test that you see, which was very cool. Um, 
I, I thought there were some really cool quotes from Douglas Sirk about mm. uh, about you know what he what he saw in Hudson and that he tried to bring out in his films. Uh, I didn't know about that first movie they made together. That's like this 1920s comedy where Rock, Rock Hudson plays like a 1920s soda jerk or whatever opposite <laughs> Piper Laurie. Um, the Ross Hunter quotes I thought were also very revealing. Uh, and that he was a guy, producer. He was a producer yeah, at Paramount. That, that's a whole it? other movie. Yeah, he he produced all of the big the the very glossy Cirque movies. Magnificent Obsession and Written on the Wind. And he did a Pillow Talk, I think, also. Like, he, he's, he did a very kind of sumptuous, like, all the women in ermine and pearls, you know, kind of movies. <laughs> you know, he didn't want kitchen sink. He wanted glamour all the time. Uh, and he was like, he actually tried to tell people after Rock Hudson died that Hudson didn't have AIDS and wasn't gay. Like, he was so so rooted in the 1950s that he just never let it go oh, but gosh. he was gay himself you know Clearly. um so yeah there were some there were definitely some things i'd at least never seen before mm. and and definitely uh quotes from people i didn't know existed and 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 facets of hudson's life that they his personal life they talked about that i that was news to me also i found it shocking but not shocking the way mm. like the reagan administration dealt with him <laughs> Right. Yeah. Given that like, he was a Republican and he was friends with them. Like you see him yeah. photograph, he's friends with Nancy Reagan. And yeah. so when he's dying in the hospital in Paris and he needs to be transferred to a hospital that's going to be able to treat him better, but he needs help getting in there as an American in, in France. Like they're like, sorry, we can't help you. Yeah. Like that is, is not shocking at all. <laughs> uh, exactly. And, and Ronald Reagan, it should be noted, did not utter the word AIDS in public until like a good year or two after Hudson died. Oh. That's how totally head in the sand they were being about this whole thing that was you know killing hundreds of thousands of americans yeah no they, they they get their arms around a lot very efficiently here like it encompasses an entire life and an entire career and an entire legacy very efficiently it's only like an hour and 45 minutes long but never feels like it's short changing him mm -hmm. professionally or personally it's a nice reminder of just how incredibly beautiful he was you know yeah. six foot four and hunky and just like again the idea that the all-american ideal like romantic leading man ideal you know was also a gay man it was also struggling is an interesting and very sad contradiction there um i thought that the recollections from the women he had worked with, be it, mm -hmm. you know, Doris Day, Linda Evans, Elizabeth Taylor, those were all really moving, you know, yeah. that they all, they all knew and they all loved him no matter what. And they all have a job to do. The fact that Linda Evans breaks down at the recollection of him kissing her closed mouth at when he was doing his guest bit on Dynasty. Right. Like he wanted to protect her and how, how she was ostracized in the makeup room because she kissed him. Like... Oh, just, yeah. I mean, Elizabeth it, Taylor talks about how when she started trying to do fundraising about AIDS, that not only did she get door slammed in her face, she got death threats. Like, people in Hollywood were so afraid of talking about this thing in public. Right. Uh, it, you know, we look back on it now, and it seems like, oh, everybody was on board. No, 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 no. no. It, like, when, when Elizabeth Taylor really, like, first started coming out in, as, as an advocate for this stuff and, and, and trying to just get people to talk about it, get people to raise money, like, she faced a lot of shit. She's a genuine hero. Yeah, I, I love the line they quote her saying here, which is like, why isn't someone doing about this? And I realize, <laughs> bitch, you should do something about this. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of so, my favorite parts. I never seen that quote before. Using her clout, right? Using <sighs> using her name to to walk the walk. Yeah. Um, it's it's if you are a fan of his, even if if you don't know anything about him at all, I think it's it's a great look at his filmography and his range and all that he could do, you know, that he was so much more than just a, a beautiful man. Yeah. He had he had depth and he had versatility in him. And I had totally forgotten that he was on Dynasty. I watched Dynasty in the eighties and you look at him as like, oh gosh, he looks so frail. It's so sad. Yeah, I, I think I had stopped watching by that point, but I know about Dynasty just because of the whole, the Linda Evans kiss. And then they show you like the two things that were the sort of, the precipitated like the final stuff was the dynasty stuff and then the, the guest appearance on doris day's tv show about pets or whatever and uh, yeah both in both cases like you can sort of see in his face like this is a guy who is under he's go undergoing something physical right now that's you know that, that's really having a toll on him yeah. um i also love any reminder to people if you've never seen seconds directed by john frankenheimer i have not you don't know what Rock Hudson can do as an actor until you see Seconds. That movie is amazing, and he's really great in it. And cool. he was 
always sort of haunted by the fact that it didn't that it flopped people did not want to see him in a role like that but he's so good and the movie is so intense and unsettling it's you, you should check it out for sure okay well, what's your number then I would say eight and a half. I think okay. this is a really good doc. And I think that it's, um, again, I, I think it, like you said, it, it does, it does wrap its arms around a lot. And I think that even if people just want to dismiss it as being like, oh, it's just some old movie thing, like it really does hit on this moment in the history where the American culture had to deal with AIDS and gay people in a way that they had not wanted to do for a very long time and what that looked like in the moment, which was not great. Yeah. Uh, I'll say 8.2. Yeah, it's very good. So Rock Hudson, All That Heaven Allowed is on Max. Go check it out.